What's up, fellow lords of gaming, and welcome back to another episode of Marvel Future Revolution. So, let's jump right into this. This is going to piggyback off of the last series that we were doing, where the problems with Doctor Strange, where I want to jump in and I want to explore the common questions that you guys were throwing out there. It was basically like, well, he has his utility in this and this and this and this and that. And I want to address those. Doctor Strange has basically three class skills. He has the Touch of Ashanti, the Illusion Magic class, and the Mystic Arts class. The one that most players are probably the most familiar with in terms of the meta design for the character is the Mystic Arts damage build. That one's going to be the most feasible in every state of game game mode play right now because nothing in this game is weighted towards you being a utility character or needing to be a utility character and nothing is weighted in here in terms of being a support character or less a, a crowd control character most of the game modes tunnel you into a uh, single target DPS even in the areas where ads are um, are coming at you they're very few and far in between that shoot they don't they don't require you to be in a crowd control play most areas end up funneling you into a single target dps situation and therefore you need to be able to maximize damage the best uh observation of this is taking a look at the eternals raid we start out with this big wide area control where ads are coming in and you have to control the ads but with four players it's typically easy to control those ads it's not like you're the solo player trying to control that many ads so four players trying to do that is there but then even in those areas you'll notice like once you get to the unity field that you're basically you know controlling your one area for you know the uni mind to form and you have a single a main single target dps that's doing the majority of damage not the smaller ads so you go inside blitz so i want to show you and break down uh some of his other ones to start out with though because it seems to be a lot of question about those about those characters so let's jump straight into skills right so we're gonna look at skills and i want to point out to you guys uh let's start out with the touch of ashanti class the Touch of Ashanti class skill is basically Doctor Strange's, it's his buff support, right? It's his buff support skill inside the class. It's his utility skill. It's his support class skill inside the game. So if I was to look at, you know, Doctor Strange, let's break down and look at the skills one through eight in terms of how we see those skills and their feasibility or usability. Inside the Masters of the Mystic Arts class, we basically have the Touch of Ashanti Soul Enhance. This ability is going to increase Doctor Strange's defense pierce by 24.76% for 10 seconds. This skill alone is probably the reason why Netmarble chose not to give Doctor Strange the ability to have have defense pierce on a, so many of his uniforms or as an innate ability inside the game because when you look at this skill it only has a required stamina of 24 24 and it has a cooldown time of 22.2 seconds that means roughly if you were able to max out dr strange's um his defense pierce at you, uh, excuse me his cooldown time at max for 75 percent you could feasibly get this cool and then get the max cooldown as well you could feasibly feasibly have this skill down on maybe a five to six second cooldown is somewhere in between that maybe nah maybe not five to six five to I'm somewhere probably in the like seven to seven to twelve second range you could probably have that skill somewhere down in that vicinity in order to just boost those defense appears so you would basically have 24.76 seven percent seven six percent let's just say 25 25 percent defense pierce up at all times this still wouldn't change the fact that there's other characters that wouldn't innately have defensive pierce capped at 75 percent at all times while you would literally be searching for ways to cap it out in the moment you capped out the defense pierce this would essentially become useless so having this as an ability in here becomes one of those things like it might help you in the early stages of building the character but it's not going to help you later on in the stages of building character and it becomes a wasted skill <laughs> it's i know players pointed this skill out but it's it's just one of those things right um that's the only skill that's there if we do not have a touch of ashanti skill or a buff skill with inside the seven rings of ragador at all the seven rings of ragador is specifically meant as an attacking skill same for the gateway summoning there are no buff skills inside the gateway summoning skill this is pretty much a damage dealing skill so we've already run into two skills now that are literally buffs when we get to mirror dimension we do have a 
another buff skill inside here and it's the touch of ashanti this one is recovering the guard gauge by 38.2 sec 32 let's just say 39 percent and reduces guard damage received by 39% for 10 seconds. You notice that the Touch of Ashanti has a 25.2 second cooldown and it requires 23 stamina. So feasibly, you could again have this one within the seven to 11 second cooldown range and probably have this up a good majority of time. And it provides uh, recovery to his allies and his own guard damage. The problem with this skill is that we still get into the habit that we are buffing another class while not really receiving benefit to our damage output. So not receiving a benefit to our damage output still puts us behind in the way this game calculate rewards because the game calculates rewards based on damage out. And that's it. Looking at the invasion mode, it's looking at the amount of time left on the clock and the amount of uh the amount of damage you as an individual player has has done against the target and most often that's a single target this isn't a bad skill in itself though right this is actually a good skill it's different from looking at soul enhance because we can't really get guard damage recovery in a lot of other ways this is going to be the one of those better things that you're able to do and cast that guard gauge recovery so it's actually pretty decent then we get down to the touch of ashanti's eye of akumoto I said that completely wrong and fucked that up is the eye of Agamotto. So then we look at this one and we can see that this orb is actually being summoned to apply 133.7% of Dr. Strange's attack to the skill. Basically, the, it, it operates similar to a companion. There's only a required stamina of 22, cooldown of 30 seconds. So, ha you know, three quarters of that would probably be 10 seconds. And we probably are looking at somewhere realistically between 12 and 15 seconds. And then we say on top of this, that it's basically operates the way a companion does. So the orb is summoned in for 10 seconds and it deals 133.7% of Dr. Strange's attack. It's not a bad skill in and of itself. It's a good way to mitigate and be able to do some of your damage dealing. But the skill that most people would probably say you should be using is going to be mirror dimension since that's the utility buff so we're going to actually change that skill out for the eye of Ogmoto. no there we go all right so next so now we've got basically buff and we got buff right guard guard damage recovery and uh master hands the the problem with guard damage recovery specifically in the game is other characters have ways of mitigating their own guard damage and you're with the dodge skill if you're properly timing skills you're really not needing to have this guard damage recovery or this ability um this ability most likely is supposed to be similar to uh captain america's i think it's I think it's his sense of liberty where he gives everybody that shield. But whether it works like that is going to be seen. So <clears throat> it's it's just one of those things. So the Eye of Ogmoto would be a good, you know, aside for the touch of Ashanti's class skills. So that way you can basically be doing some damage to him. The Astral Projection skill is another one that's up here where it's going to basically recover 9% for of stamina for each target hit. But here goes the problem is that most likely in all cases, utilizing this skill, you're going to be used like a single target. So you're only going to get 9%. Even when you are crowded up with certain characters inside some game modes like Blitz and so forth like that. Like if I jumped in Raid, not really there. So this might work in the beginning stages, but in the latter stages, it doesn't really work. Even inside a PvP environment, Environment, the only thing that your uh, astral projection skill is really good at is literally adding an iframe for Doctor Strange, which doesn't exist on a lot of his skills. You can look at some of the other skills as well inside here, and you can see like this one's increasing damage received by 28.58%. In that respect, you know, <laughs> to be honest, Astral Walk and Soul Predator, like, do I really need to recover my stamina or do I want to decrease, uh, increase the damage received for 10.8 seconds? More than likely, I'm going to go with Astral Walk. It's a little bit better. We have Summons Illusions of Icon, which applies, you know, 40% of Doctor Strange's attack, lasts for 15 seconds. I don't know about that one. And then we also have uh, Avenging Illusion, which does pretty much the exact same thing. <laughs> like it's, it's weird that we have two skills in there that 
pretty much do exactly the same thing like like you can't make this shit up in terms of how they fucked up dr strange in, in that regard we have two skills sitting side by side from each other and they do pretty much exactly the same thing the only difference is that one lasts for 10 seconds and the other one lasts for 15 seconds you can't make this shit up anyways moving right along and then once we get to this the book of ashanti we're basically using uh the book of ashanti Vish lesson of wisdom is going to be his buff class inside here where he's decreasing the cooldown by 30 percent for 10 seconds you notice that it has a pretty big cooldown requirement with a lower stamina so at best you're going to be able to summon this probably every 15 to you know 15 sec 15 to 20 seconds the other skills that are listed inside here are pretty much damage dealers we are giving up the ability um we are giving up the ability to utilize vishanti assault which is our one of our highest guard breaks and deals a significant amount of damage in order to utilize this skill so yeah the only other one that sits inside here is magical absorption which is a medium guard break skill but only does nine percent and once i get said again it literally runs into the funnel of a linear skill type that only is going to affect just one character so at most you're seeing nine percent stamina recovery it is what it is and then lastly tower of mandalas or tau mandalas these have the this one is pretty much all focused on damage dealing so there is no uh real skill in here that's going to enable you to do anything like this is mostly damage focused and stuff like that in, uh, in here so when we look at those skills we then have to take a look at the specializations that specifically gear out towards the specialization now here goes one thing that i want to pay once you pay attention to with those skills inside of using those skills we are giving up the ability to use a lot of our illusion magic class skills which will give us buffs we are basically having a touch of a shanti mystic arts kind of skill because there's not very many illusion skills that would replace uh some of our mystic arts skills inside here that would probably be beneficial does that mean that you couldn't use those no not this doesn't mean that you couldn't use those just just being realistic about a build you know you're basically saying that these skills are not going to be beneficial to you as much as the mystic art skills because you're really setting yourself behind the power curve like for instance could i get rid of the Tao mandalas and utilize eldritch anti-matter sword which is an illusion magic class skill has a 7.5 second cooldown and does knock back when the skill lands bleeds and decreases hp recovery yes i could this is really a pvp oriented skill though because this is not going to decrease hp recovery of bosses and the bleed damage really isn't going to matter very much at all when we look at giving up some of the other skills that we would have in here seven rings of ragador we can see that this is mystic arts this one's mystic arts and i think this one is illusion so here we have an illusion magic class skill that we say we're literally giving up the ability to use our um ring of repulsion which does a large bit of damage in order to do it so in order for this to work the way that you would optimally like for it to work meaning that i have an illusion magic class that will reduce that will help reduce the cooldown timers on my touch of ashanti class isn't really there and so the skill that really becomes uh pretty useless for us is the time manipulation force uh force field where it decreases remaining cooldown of all skills by 22 to 20 at max is 25 percent when you utilize a uh, illusion magic class so we kind of get you know hindered out of using that the one that we'll probably end up having to replace that with is white magic increases ultimate gauge recovery by 10 to 12 well right now at this level it's probably going to end up being 25 percent. i don't know what the final stats is uh when the touch of ashanti class skill is equipped so basically when that class skill is equipped it'll reduce our guard gauge our, our ultimate gauge uh recovery increases the ultimate gauge recovery now the problem with this is though is that again i've told you guys before your ultimate gauge is pretty much useless like your ultimate skill inside this game is a crowd control effect that doesn't do a lot of damage at max is dealing less damage than some of your other skills like gateway summoning uh ring of repulsion and tal of mandalas and even uh the vishanti assault it does less damage than that it's easily escapable and it's interruptible so it basically this 
uh, utilizing this skill becomes one of those things that's like it, it makes the touch of Ashanti uh, p active trait pretty much useless in that regard. I would most likely just inter use this skill. A lot of characters, a lot of players typically use Hogoth's Blessing because it decreases damage received from targets, which is really good because Doctor Strange doesn't have a way to mitigate a lot of damage coming in since he's basically relying on defense, his defensive stat or his HP stat as to mitigate damage while he can't really max out dodge rate at the early game so that's what you're basically looking at um i wouldn't suggest going into any other skill classes until you pretty much max out some of the other uh max out like your cooldown decrease and the, your cooldown rate because once you get that to 75 percent you can go into increasing your max cooldown by a little bit more for uh you know waves waves of despair but in the early game really not keen on using that one and then there isn't very many other ones in here that you would specifically use like uh i don't know if these active traits that i'm going to point out to you right now are planned for later down the road or you know why they included them in the early game but he basically has shifting sands where he's increasing the dura increases duration of status effects dealt to enemies we see that dr strange doesn't really have a lot of status effects being dealt to enemies it's, it's he's not like star lord he's not like storm he's not dealing status effects to them to enemies that bleed is about the most that he has why they would include bleed as part of his package anyways makes no sense it's not like he's cutting people up but nevertheless okay so i don't see the the, the feasible uh nature of that skill when we look at his uh white magic ether he increases his immunity rate to confuse, mutate, and provoke. Um, yeah, what what was the purpose of this skill? Because this active trait, because who the hell is casting that? Like, if I don't know any enemies that we've had that that are that are targeting you with confuse, mutate, or provoke, and I don't know very many players that are casting that at you where it would be a concern. Because if I'm getting it from another player, uh, it would most likely be confused from doctor strange <laughs> no other doctor strangers are playing that to actually confuse you because that confuse skill that he has is pretty shit um so yeah I, I don't know what the thought and then we have decreased duration of all debuffs received by three by you know a set amount of time as well upon equipping three touch of ashanti class skills well this one would be the most beneficial of all of here but what debuffs are we actually receiving from other characters now in a pvp oriented situation this might help out with your battles against uh star lord storm and maybe to some degree spider-man so we'd see with that one but what i'm going to do is i'm going to equip this one anyways because the it, it's just yeah it is what it is that's the one that is seemingly like they wanted here goes the problem that i also have with this system they don't have a way for you to actually switch out active traits basically i've done all the work that i can to increase my active traits but they and unlock them but they still make me pay for active traits it's it's weird you see i have to pay gold and i have to pay some of my convergium for switching out active traits it makes it less you know likely that i'm gonna want to actually you know do some of this stuff and we can see that i'm taking some uh some some hits here or some you know boost to my overall class build so we can see where we stand now in, term, in terms of some of those so what i want to do is i'm going to run this character through blitz um and we'll see how this works out in terms of being a main support so we'll, we'll load up chains of the abyss we'll run that through on there and we see exactly now here goes the <laughs> excuse me here goes the other funny thing about this there's a lot of times i don't need other players for a lot of these game modes for instance like at the end game level of this, you can run most of the rage yourself. You can run most of the blitzes yourself. You can roll you can roll through a whole lot of stuff in this game solo. So having support abilities doesn't really seem to matter. So I'm gonna let the game autoplay through it on itself. I do have uh what you call so you can see he automatically goes to cast cooldown decrease. Who knows why that happens? We're utilizing damage. I'm going to put up my damage window so that way you guys can see where I'm ranking in terms of damage output. It doesn't necessarily matter that I do a lot of damage inside this mode because of the fact that... Um, because of the fact that 
it, this mode doesn't really as far as i know this mode doesn't really account for my damage output you know what i mean in terms of like the rewards at the end i don't believe it does i want you to pay attention to my stamina bar up here i have about 150 percent stamina recovery and i want you to pay attention to even the rotation of these skills and how my stamina gauge is being utilized M majority of the touch of ashanti skills have very low stamina uh stamina costs so when you're using the touch of ashanti's skill this is the the build where it seems to matter the least in terms of how much stamina you have because the numbers are you, they can be mitigated inside here most of the costs are somewhere between 15 and 22 percent or 25 percent so not necessarily too bad we can see uh here captain america gets off his um I, I believe that's a sense of liberty skill. I haven't played him in so long, so I would have to I, I have to go look. But it basically protects our guard gauge inside the skill. Now, I would love to be able to play with someone so that way when I cast my defensive pierce ability in here, my soul enhance that increases everybody's defense pierce, that we could see that actually take effect on a character. I don't really have a way to notice that. Now I am looking at Melancia. And they have that elite squad name above them. So um, I'm trying not to use uh, my character here. Actually, you know what? No, I'll throw it in there because it will boost me and my other characters. And I'm literally in this support role for this anyways, right? So we'll see. I'm not per using any enhancers because I want you to see how my stats are just accumulating inside here. <clears throat> so we have our ultimate skill up again i don't really find a big use in this the amount of damage it does does is minuscule you can see that ticking clock off there <laughs> melancia is way out ahead at 11 000, uh 11 million damage i'm feeling really far behind especially in a game mode where i typically feel like i'm in the top one or two but this is what i'm doing i'm supporting the class so we can see a lot of skills popping off here see that small circle of area i don't know if the buff is automatically distributed to the other people because i can't see the buffs applied to them above their head and i obviously can't see their bar and there's nothing here to show me their buffs either it'd be nice to be able to see that i would probably have to team up with people so that way i could actually see how that skill plays out and we can see here that i finished in third place of everyone with about 8 million damage i can tell you right now that typically inside of this game mode uh blitz i'm usually dealing about 13 to 15 million damage so that represents probably a nearly half drop at least a 40 percent drop off in output damage the reason why i bring that up is because it should be reflective of what could happen to me inside of a mode like invasion where if i was playing that mode specifically where it generates you know the rewards based on the amount of damage i've done and the amount of time it takes us as a team to lock that down uh yeah i can tell you three minutes right here <laughs> ain't even a good time for this event like you see that's not a record for me at all three minutes is a pretty goddamn long time inside here so i've effectively not helped out the team by allowing them to have their skills on cooldown and so forth like that so it's one of those builds, but it is the thing that I want to I want to be able to show you guys because I think that it is important for people to understand the viability of skills versus, you know, having skills available to you. You have things available to you at, in all of the classes that are that are there. It's whether or not those things are viable and how they fit in the meta of the game. So having a defense pierce uh, boosting skill that is underneath the touch of Ashanti isn't necessarily a bad thing, especially if I can actually implement it and slot it and that it, there's better there's not better skills in that class. So we'll kind of finish out there with that when I so I can point this out to you guys so like soul enhance having that defense pierce and increasing that on my allies might be really well and good inside a game mode like invasion because i can help everybody out but the problem with that inside that game mode is literally i'm not helping myself necessarily either because i'm allowing you to get out ahead of me because your defensive pierce your defense pierce is likely to be out ahead of mine if you're playing as certain characters your defense pierce is going to be well on its way so 
it's one of those things right and so like if i was looking even at mirror dimension where i'm using this to recover guard get guard gauge and guard damage breaks inside here would this skill be more beneficial for me to have to be worried about the guard damage recovery as it would be for me to use one of the other skills like dimension lockdown or um or even uh not invitation to the best which one is it? the dimensional collapse would those skills be more beneficial than you know having this guard gauge recovery we already know without a doubt that inside the book of ashanti this decreased cooldown by 28.58 percent seconds or 30 30 seconds in here might be beneficial but the cooldown timer is 40 seconds so that means it's only up every 50 seconds or so it is a big cooldown decrease 30 percent on anybody's individual skills but i'm then actually Actually losing out on damage of about 1200% and that guard break which is going to help my teammates get to dealing damage a lot quicker and a lot harder on targets so you have to balance that act now when you're looking at you know uniforms that are available to you for those as well you then start to go uh, go a little bit deeper on the character and saying that um you're probably i think the best costume overall in my opinion for dr strange at this point is going to be his savage shadowland the rough part about saying that it's going to be his savage shadowland is the part that you're definitely gearing yourself up specifically towards pve in some direction because the defense pierce that is set on his two set ability which means it's going to be a lower percentage than on some of the other characters who has it set on the three set effect and therefore and therefore are receiving higher percentages if you don't know what i mean basically click on any one of the other characters and then look at their defense pierce and you can see that the base level stat that's applied for the character where is his at his is at two at the third set so he's getting 11.6 meanwhile i'm I, as a character dr strange would only be receiving 7.6 percent so you're starting at a lower cap for that defense pierce more than likely because they thought in their minds that including that soul enhance ability was going to give dr strange some access to a skill that you know was going to boost his defense pierce innately and you would have uptime from those skills but unfortunately it doesn't really play out that way and it doesn't really benefit you and in the way that you would like to have benefit i'm going to try to bring you guys some other content for the other ones as well the illusion magic and then work my way back into the mystic art class skill and then try to find a uh positive in between for those we'll get into that uh later I uh, hope you guys enjoy this new series that we're going through here. Um, I've got a lot more to say about this game in general, and I'm planning on probably going to do a, uh, a stream with you guys for uh, working through my, um, my Star-Lord, because I really need to get on top of that. Until next time, guys, peace.